Welcome to Tech Talks. Our platform edition today is focused on Dashboard Studio. Reimagine what you can do with your dashboards. Tech Talks is a series of short webinars that are deep dives for technical practitioners. We value you, our customer, and want you to continue in your Splunk journey. Our experts help create these best practices, and we want you to leverage them in your daily role. Hi, I'm Judith Silverberg-Reina, and I work in product marketing for the Core Splunk platform, and I'm excited to give you some background and an overview of Dashboard Studio and introduce my colleague, Lizzie Lee. Hi, I'm Lizzie Lee, a Senior Product Manager, and I will share the capabilities, features, and demo of Dashboard Studio. Thanks, Lizzie. Today, we are going to talk about dashboards before Dashboard Studio, go into what exactly is Dashboard Studio, its many capabilities and benefits, walk through some use cases and a demo, and then we'll cover additional resources available to help you take advantage of Dashboard capabilities in Splunk. Our team will be available for Q&A throughout over the Q&A widget without your, within your screen. And if you watch a recorded version of this webinar, please continue the conversation through the Tech Talk discussions in the Splunk community at splunk.com slash tech talk. Customers have shared with us a variety of challenges with our traditional simple XML dashboards, now known as classic dashboards. They found it hard to craft a story, and it's pretty unintuitive. This is the result of limited customization with fixed layouts, and dashboards often only make sense to the person who created them. The lack of ease in customizing visualizations plus the fixed layouts make it difficult to really tell a visually compelling and informative story, often requiring custom code to do so which leads us to the next challenge that sometimes dashboards can become resource heavy. The custom development can increase costs in human resources and can become time consuming. Um, and they're also difficult to share. It's unfortunately not possible in classic dashboards to directly export and share dashboards while really maintaining the feel and design of the dashboard. Uh, and all this makes it harder to share insights and turn data into doing. We saw these challenges through our customer success team and on Splunk Ideas, many of which were some of the most highly upvoted features on the site. Um, and we truly listened to you and took these to our amazing product team. And now we bring you Dashboard Studio, this new dashboard building experience became generally available in our April 1st cloud release, 8.1.2103, and in Splunk Enterprise 8.2. Dashboard Studio, previously known as the Dashboard Beta app, which many of you might recognize as one of our most popular apps on Splunk Base, is our new intuitive option for building visually compelling dashboards. And of course, this new feature is free of charge. It empowers you to easily create powerful storytelling dashboards with advanced visualization tools for any of your data stories. Now I'm going to hand it off to our dashboard PM Lizzie to share to show you and walk you through the capabilities and show you what's now possible. Thanks, Judith. As Judith mentioned, one of the key challenges with simple XML was customizing the layout of visualizations. With Dashboard Studio, we provide two new layout options, both of which provide more flexibility. Absolute Layout is like a free-form canvas where you can drag and drop visualizations anywhere you want. You can resize and layer them as well. Grid Layout is great for when you need to quickly and neatly organize charts as it provides for snap to alignment and automatic resizing. Being able to customize the layout will allow you to tell your data stories in completely new and different ways. We've also added support for new visualization types that also help you to better relay your data by providing context around your visualizations or helping to draw users' attention to the most important information. With Dashboard Studio, you can now add images, icons, shapes, lines, arrows, and text boxes. We've also added support for SVGs, which allow 
which you can use for custom images like maps, floor plans, or diagrams. These SVGs can also be set up to dynamically change color based on the data returned. You can make the dashboard and visualizations more compelling by making them user interactive with inputs, tokens, and drill downs. In this example, you can change the campus and floor being viewed, providing for a very interactive and visual experience. We've also added features to help you build more efficiently and make your dashboard more performant. Imagine a dashboard like this one here, where we have multiple single value visualizations that we want to apply the same thresholding logic to. Rather than having to repeatedly set the same thresholding logic to each single value, you can specify a default setting for all single values. That means only having to set it once in Dashboard Studio, your data sources are separate entities from your visualizations. This means that multiple visualizations can use the same data source, meaning far few, fewer searches are being executed, improving performance. We've also made sure to have UI for adding chain searches, which allow you to do post-processing on a base search. We'll show examples of how to leverage all of these capabilities in the demo. Now, these new dashboarding capabilities are only as powerful as the ability to share the data insights captured in the dashboard. We invested heavily and continue to invest heavily in an improved user experience so that the UI editor is intuitive and easy for you to use and create dashboards. We've also made sure that when you want to share your dashboards with colleagues or executives, that the export will actually maintain the look and feel of the dashboard unlike in simple XML. So how do you get started? We have built out an examples hub accessible directly from the dashboards page in search and reporting that provides examples of each dashboard element, visualizations, inputs, data sources, and so on, as well as complete dashboard examples. You can use these for inspiration and learn new tricks that you can employ in your own dashboards. Now, let's see this all in action. So now I'm going to switch over to Splunk so that I can show you Dashboard Studio in action. When you upgrade to a version of Splunk that has Dashboard Studio out of the box, what you'll find is that in your dashboards page within search and reporting, you'll have access to both your simple XML dashboards, as well as your new Studio dashboards. And we've also provided some resource cards to make it easier for you to access the documentation or the examples hub. Let's take a quick look at the examples hub. You can find examples for all the different dashboard elements and their various configurations from this examples hub. All you do is find the element that you're interested in looking at, and you can see different examples of how you can set up an area chart, for example, and you can see all of the, the SPL that we use to power this chart as well as the actual source definition. So you can just double click to copy and paste and use this in your own dashboard. You can also look at some of these complete dashboards for inspiration on how you could build your own dashboards, or if you see something that you really like and you want to use this as a starting point, same thing, you can just come to the bottom of the page and find the full source code to double click to copy and paste this into your own dashboard definition. Uh, but for the purposes of this demo, we're going to build a new dashboard from scratch. So when you create a new dashboard, You'll have to select between uh, simple XML or studio and then select one of the layout options. To add any visualization elements to your dashboard, you just add them from the top toolbar here. So you can see there are charts, in inputs, icons, uh, shapes, images, and text boxes. The first thing that we're actually going to do is create a new data source. So you can view all your data sources from here and they'll be listed here for you. So let's create um, a data source here. And what you'll see is by default, the time range that it's using is going to be the global time range picker that's added to all dashboards. And as we um, 
tie this data source to visualizations, inputs, or chain searches, you'll see this count increase here. So you can actually see what's being used or not. And anytime that you want to see the source code for an element, whether it's a data source or a visualization or an input, it'll have this code drawer at the bottom, which if you expand it, you'll actually see the underlying JSON for this um, for that element. So now let's add this data source to a couple of visualizations. First, I'm going to add a table. And so again, you can see anytime you add a visualization, you can always add a new data source if you want. But since we already have one set up, let's just go ahead and add that. Let's add maybe one, one more visualization and use the same data source. So what you can see is in Studio, data sources are their own entities separate from visualizations, meaning you can have one data source power multiple visualizations, which you can use to improve the performance of your dashboard. If you wanted to look at the source code for the entirety of the dashboard, you can do so by coming here to this icon. And it'll actually show you the full JSON for the dashboard definition. Every definition is made up of five components, visualizations, data sources, defaults, inputs, and layouts. Visualizations is where we would specify things like what visualizations we want on the dashboard, as well as any options that we include, and then specifying which data source should be used with that visualization. As you can see, the data source that we're using is the same between these two visualizations, and it's specified under this data sources uh, section where we specified the type of data source that we're using. We also support chain searches and save searches as well as the query that's being used and the name that we display in the UI. Under inputs is where you would find any inputs that you've added to your dashboard. So same thing, the type of input, any options related to it, and the title you want displayed in the UI. And then the layout section is where you actually specify where all of these different objects should show up on the canvas. For any visualizations, You'll specify, it'll, it'll reference whatever the visualization ID is and then actually show you the position and the size for that visualization. And for all inputs, you would list them under this global input section. And the order that they show up here is the order that they'll show up in the, um, in the dashboard from left to right. Now, the last section that we haven't talked about yet is the default section. What the default section allows you to do is apply a setting once and then have it be the default behavior for whatever entity that you've applied it to. So in this example, what you can see is that under our default section, we're specifying some default behaviors for data sources. We're specifying specifically for ds.search, so basically inline or ad hoc searches like we just created. And we're saying that we want them to use the time range picker uh, or the time that's selected in the time range picker for all of those searches. What that means is if we add, as we add more searches, they will all adhere to this global time range picker unless we specify otherwise. So let me give you an example of what it looks like if we specify otherwise, and let's do it for visualizations. Let's say I wanted to add a global visualizations option where I say, um, for my visualizations, for all visualizations, hence the global here, I want to show the last updated time on all of those charts. Uh, and maybe I actually want to show it for all charts except for the table visualization. Then I can add another stanza here that says, for my table visualization, Uh, don't show that last updated time. And so as you can see, if we apply more specific defaults, this will always override the more global default. And anytime that you want to change it for one specific data source or visualization, you can always specify that option here, and it will override anything that's in the default section. So now if we go back to the canvas view, you can see that the last updated time is now showing on this bar chart, but is not showing on this table. So let's take a look at a slightly more advanced dashboard. And see how we can apply uh, defaults here. Uh, in this example, I have some KPIs that I'm tracking in my data center. Um, in particular, 
on this image, I want to track the temperature of each server rack. And so you can see I've already added the visualization for each rack, and I've already associated the, the, data, the data source that I need. But what I need to do next is configure this threshold so that it will change colors based on the temperature that's being returned per the, the legend that you see here. So let's do that. If we come uh, down here in the configuration panel to dynamic elements, you can see that there are different options that you can choose between coloring just the major value, just the trend, or a combination of both. In this case, we're going to just color the background. Um, and then what we're going to do here is change the color. As you can see, this color doesn't quite match what's here. So when you open this up, what you'll see is that we provided a palette. Uh, predefined palettes for you to select from. You can always specify your own custom colors as you wish. Since we're in dark mode, we're going to use light colors for higher contrast. Um, and then because I actually only want three, um, three different colors, let me remove a couple of ranges so that I'm left with just three. Uh, and what I want is when it's hotter to be red, and when it's cooler to be green. So I'm gonna flip the order of this by clicking these buttons here. And I'm just gonna adjust these thresholds so that they align to the, the legend that you see here. And if I wanted a different color palette, I could go ahead and select that. You can see we've provided all of these options for you out of the box. But again, if you want to override any one of them, you can just put in the hex color that you want. So now that I have this visualization colored as such, I want to apply it to all of these other visualizations. And I could do that by going one by one and repeating the same steps as you saw. But this is what we're going to do instead. We're going to leverage the default section of the dashboard definition. So let's go look at the source code. Let's find the, that particular visualization. And you can see here, this is, this is what we're using to actually specify the thresholds and the colors that we're using. And we're going to basically move this entire section into default. So I'm actually going to cut from here. And then we're going to go to the default section. And here under visualizations, we'll add a new stanza for Splunk .single, for all single values. And we're just going to go ahead and paste that right in here. And now when we go back to the UI, you're going to see that that default setting, those default configurations for that thresholding is applied to all of the visualizations here. And as you can see, the single value visualizations up here have not changed. And that's because we applied very specific um, configurations to these when they were originally set up. And so because there are very local settings here, they will always override any global settings that are applied. One more really neat thing I wanted to also show before we wrap up today is to um, show you how you can select different fields from a data source to apply to a visualization. So I'm going to add a single value visualization where I'm actually gonna display the current time. And I already have uh, that data source set up here for current time. And what you'll see is what we're going to do is select the data field from this data source that we want to be displayed here. The timestamp that comes out of the box with Splunk, the, the typical time format is something like this, but it's a little hard for me to read. So what I actually did is in my in my data source here was just format the time so that it's a lot easier to read. And so I'm going to just swap swap to pick this other field. And so now you can see um, how easy it is to switch between uh, different fields in a data source. So again, imagine if you're leveraging one data source to power multiple KPIs, it's as easy as just adding the same data source to multiple visualizations and then just selecting from here the different fields that you want. Um, and so with that, I am going to um, switch us back to um, the slides to wrap up for today. With the introduction of Dashboard Studio, there is a world of possibilities for the dashboards you can create. One caveat is that we wanted to make Dashboard Studio available sooner rather than later. 
so there are still some features we're working on adding and improving. Keep these in mind when you're deciding whether to build a dashboard in Classic Simple XML or Dashboard Studio. Use Classic Simple XML dashboards when you need custom or third-party visualizations, advanced token support and drill-down actions, or scheduled email export. These things are on the roadmap for Dashboard Studio, but not available yet. Use Dashboard Studio when you want to create executive dashboards, dashboards with custom layouts or images, or dashboards that provide a digital twin representation. Dashboard Studio is also great for when you have multiple visualizations that use similar underlying searches so that you can leverage the ability to reduce how many searches are executed from the dashboard. One other important thing to note is that we don't plan to add new features to classic simple XML dashboards, although they are still fully supported. We are investing all new feature development efforts into Dashboard Studio. So to sum up, Dashboard Studio provides the capabilities and flexibility to build dashboards that better communicate insights and information. With the ability to better visualize your data and improve data density, you can both maximize your screen real estate and more easily share those insights with others. The best part is that you can create these highly visual dashboards with native capabilities rather than needing custom code like in simple XML. This saves you from needing custom development and having to maintain and fix breakages between upgrades. Ultimately, for you to get the most value from the data in your Splunk environment, you need to be able to visualize it and the new Dashboard Studio capabilities help you get more value out of Splunk. And with better visualizations, more users can now engage with your Splunk data rather than needing to support additional visualizations tools. Use Splunk as a one-stop shop, keeping within the Splunk platform. Dashboard Studio is already available to Splunk Cloud customers on 8.1.2103 and will soon be made available to Splunk Enterprise customers in 8.2. With each release, you can expect more capabilities that range from enhancements of existing features to net new features. And you'll start to see this new dashboard experience in other Splunk products, such as ITSI's glass tables and Mission Control's dashboards. This new experience will eventually become the primary dashboarding framework in Splunk. Now, I'll hand it back over to Judith to wrap us up. Great. Thanks, Lizzie, for that presentation and demo. We're about ready to wrap up this Tech Talk. Before we do, I wanted to share quickly some resources available to you to continue your journey. You will receive these assets in a follow-up email as well as in the recording. We have our documentation with all the details, the examples hub that can easily be found in product, a longer demo on YouTube, a handy dashboard quick start guide that now includes Dashboard Studio, and our uh, GA introduction blog. And very soon in June, our creating dashboard course will touch on Dashboard Studio. Don't forget, we have an incredible community of Splunk users on our community site. You can search the answer section on Dashboard. You can continue the conversation for this talk within the discussion section called Tech Talks, where you'll find all the additional resources. And finally, there's Splunk Ideas, where you can submit new product enhancements or vote for current ideas from other customers. We really appreciate you taking the time out of your schedules to join us today. Please tune back in for future Tech Talks. We're excited to share the series with you.